Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and I bought a Creality CR10 S4. So I know what you guys are thinking, oh my god, are you moving soon? What are you doing? Why are you buying a blah, blah, blah. Well, first off, with me moving back to the States, I am starting to load up on my arsenal of printers. I want to open up some type of Etsy shop. I want to open up a little bit of a print farm. I want to increase production. So I've been keeping an eye out for really, really good deals on printers. This printer is used. I got a very, 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 very good deal on it that I couldn't pass up. It's a Reality CR10 S4 meaning it is 400 by 400 by 400. It is a massive printer, but it is basically exactly the same as the original CR10S's with a couple modifications. Now you can see here, it's already built. I was going to really kind of walk you guys through the build, but I figured, well, a time lapse would probably be a little bit more beneficial, so here we go. Wasn't that time lapse of a specified length that I've yet to determine really fun and interesting? It's a very, very simple printer to build. There's four bolts that go in through the bottom. You plug everything in, you kind of just turn it on. These aren't complicated printers to uh, build. I did mount the filament holder up top. I'll give you guys a little bit of a closer look at that. I've already gone and upgraded a few parts. I've already gone and put a Bowden Capricorn tube on it. I put it on the yellow extruder. I've modified the filament runout sensor. I've tightened some things up. I've moved some stuff around. And I've even flashed the firmware to the new TH3D Unified firmware so it just runs better and now it has power loss recovery and just better firmware on it. So let me take you around it and give you a closer look at what it is. When I say that this printer is basically exactly the same as this printer, I'm not kidding. The only key differences from a standard CR10S are the, um, the Y stepper motor, the size of the bed, the amount of belts, but everything else is the same. But you can see back here that the Y stepper motor is a lot beefier to handle this belt system. And there's two rails here to move everything forward and back and obviously the larger bed. Still has the same um, plugs for the Z motors, still has the same type of extruder, Bowden tube system, Mark 8 hot end, and pretty much the exact same control box. It's just flashed differently from the factory to compensate for the larger build surface. 
Now, I've already gone and flashed the firmware on this and I'll leave a link down below showing you guys how you can flash firmware with TH3D's older systems. I did a video on that, but basically it kind of rearranges how things on the control box are. So you get motion and temperature now and you can do a lot more with the configuration. It's really, really neat and it just kind of flows and makes a lot more sense. And if you don't have the feature for leveling corners, now it's there and it'll take you through an automatic leveling feature where it moves the nozzle into each of the corners to help you level it out. This is the all metal extruder. I had an extra one and I had a bunch of Capricorn Bowden tube. I just replaced them right off the bat. I don't want to mess around with anything going wrong with it. And then I modified my fil filament runout sensor with a little bit of extra Bowden tube. So as it pulls into the filament runout sensor, it doesn't wear down the inlet channel. This can happen on some of the printers. Um, again, I'm really not too worried about it. I know that'll last. Move the filament holder up here with these two little set screws and the little, little jam nuts. You do have to open these holes up a little bit more. I'm gonna go through, I haven't leveled the bed yet. We'll do that and we'll see if we can get a print going. All right, I've got some cool G-code loaded. I just wanna see how that first layer goes down. It's printing on a raft, so I wanna see how even and flat I can get it. Um, if I leveled everything right, the baby Z-step feature should take care of any issues I'm having. So let's get this started. Our first layer is about to start, so uh, let's take a look. And here is our first print on the S4. From what I can see right in there, it looks like I'm a little high. So we're gonna try to adjust this the best we can. So right now it feels like spaghetti. There's a nice ridge on that. I don't want that. I'm gonna double press my screen and that's gonna give me access to baby Z steps. And I'm gonna slowly start to lower these about one. And we're gonna take a better look at it. Lower it too. And I'm looking for some squish. I want the filament to come out like a pancake. And we're getting closer. I'm still not the happiest with it. Let's try, we're gonna try all the way. I believe that's one millimeter. Now we're a little too close. We'll back it off to about 750. But we are sticking. That's a bonus. Can't complain about that. Let's get a good look here. That, there it is. All right, you can definitely see how thin the far right one was. I got a little too close in the middle and now my far left one Looks pretty spot on. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to let this run because I actually am in need of some raft material for some other projects. So I'm going to let this go a little bit. We're not printing a 300% scale Mjolnir. I'm sorry. Uh, this roll just doesn't have it in it. But yeah, adjusting your baby Z step while your first layer goes down can really make or break a print. And this lets me know I need to re-level my bed and make the sticky note just a little bit tighter. Uh, right now I have it loose between the nozzle and bed. I should get it just a little bit tighter in all four corners and then uh, we should be in business. But this is sticking. This is sticking beautifully. Hmm. Maybe I've been sleeping on glass beds. All right, we'll come back.
Okay, it is the next day and we're still printing that first raft. I'm so just kidding. Um, we printed a few other things, so yeah. This thing works pretty good. You can get some pretty good quality right off the bat on it. Just make sure your bed's clean, make sure your bed's level, make sure your temperature's dialed in. I can't necessarily say I wouldn't recommend it for your first printer, but it is a rather large printer, so just take that into consideration. So that just about does it for this video, guys. I know this was a little bit of a weird one. It was kind of a build overview and kind of a print review and kind of an upgrade overview and kind of just whatever I wanted it to be. It was just fun to kind of build a printer use it and see what happens. I really, 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 really appreciate the feedback from you guys. What videos do you like? What videos don't you like? What videos do you want more of? I read every single comment you guys drop all over my YouTube. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, maybe take a look around the channel. I have some cool secret projects going on that I can't really show you. I have a lot more content planned. Please stay tuned for that. I'm gonna get back to printing these things for future projects and uh, that pretty much does it. So thank you so much for watching and you guys have a good day.